Today I have the key to the new Bentley Continental GT. Here in the top trim, the Continental GT Speed. And in the front here, new design. Look at that typical Bentley grille. And it's supposed to be like a tiger in the front with this twinkling eye a little bit because you see here the data run light is now here extended to the side. Always interesting here, look at that, how the turning indicator has this cascading effect. So that looks actually quite cool. The color here is extreme silver and there will be big news coming up under the hood. Which powertrain will they use? We'll soon reveal that to you. This sits here together, by the way, on the platform of the Porsche Panamera, just that this one here is a two-door concept. 22-inch wheels are standard here in this case, then in the all-black styling. And you can get it as the Coupe or here as the GTC. This is then the convertible, the Cabriolet. And at the later stage, we can also show the Coupe and, of course, also drive it. New suspension update here, two-valve air suspension. So this is supposed to bring more comfort and sportiness at the very same time. They do not use this special hydraulic suspension from the Porsche Panamera or the Taycan, which you can get optional. But I think it's also not really needed. And here on the left side, you can already see, hmm, yeah, what powertrain will be expecting us. Very interesting, isn't it? Four meters 90 or 193 inches is the length, by the way. When the vehicle is closed or opened, then you have this very impressive light show here for the new tail lamps. They are more three-dimensional, crystalline look. And here the rear perspective. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is the case for the Autogefühl fake exhaust police because the real exhaust is here on the inside. Top speed, by the way, the convertible is around at 180 miles per hour. The coupe is at 200 miles per hour. So it's 285 kilometers per hour versus 335 kilometers per hour. So this is like the only real limitation you have here with the convertible. Yeah, I think the uh, tail lamps, they just look really stunning, don't they? And this one here also fitted with carbon ceramic brakes. Under the hood, also shared with Porsche, we have a 4 liter V8 by turbo. And this is a plug in hybrid actually. So you have 600 horsepower from the combustion engine plus 190 horsepower from the electric drivetrain. It's all combined makes in total over 780 horsepower. You cannot like one-to-one -one count this horsepower, horsepower figure up, not always from the IC and the electric motor. And this is actually quicker and more powerful than before, even more powerful and quicker than the W12, which will be not here anymore in this generation. So the acceleration figure here, depending on Kobe and convertible, will be some 3.4 seconds to one kilometer an hour or 62 miles an hour for the convertible and 3.2 seconds for the coupe. The MPH figure to 60 MPH will be always 0.1 second less. And yeah, as I said, quicker than the W12. So this hybrid powertrain, yes, it brings more weight, but at the same time, it also brings more performance. And the battery net is 22 kilowatt hours. And that means you can do some yeah, 60 kilometers, 30 miles at least, pure electric that will also be possible and it was also interesting for example if you think in German taxation if I would buy this one here now as a company car the private taxation you have to do per month will be cut in half being a plug-in hybrid. Two last facts about exterior and technology rear axle you will have the rear axle steering as standard and also the anti-roll control that the car always stays upright now we get to the interior it will be very exciting, I can promise. Beautiful that the key is you know, really premium. Here you have this you know, metal knurling effect at the side. That looks pretty cool. And also extremely cool is when I open the door, first of all, I could slam it, of course. That sounds good, but meant to be used here with the soft close. There we go. And look at that here, this puddle light, wow. This is a three-dimensional animation and also in a very high definition if you look closely. So this is really new and a very special feature we haven't seen before in this 
kind of resolution. Windows here, the side windows by the way, also here with a nice dual insulation of course. Another new technology, the employer at the inside of the doors. This is here um, also you know, looks somewhat soft touch, you can press it in, but it also has this three-dimensional layer, so that looks actually pretty fancy. And they also have everything here in the speed version designed in dark chrome. The speed version here is the top trim, there will be other ones um, to follow later on below that. And then here, look at that, steering wheel in this blue and black scheme. The outside ring actually here is microfiber, so that's actually pretty fancy. And also this seat here is on the inside microfiber, so for the you know most the racing style, so to speak. However, it's not yet available animal free. There are still animal leather here inside this vehicle and so far they do not offer completely animal free versions. I'm still waiting on that. They should actually hurry on that because more and more customers demand and also want a more animal friendly vehicle like me. Then, well, seating position here is a wide seat. You can of course slide more forward. Steering wheel adjustment up and down, in and out and so on. And the um, button below the steering wheel is the one that is also used by Porsche by the way. Like that is very flat one. So. You see and feel the uh, you know the resemblance to a Panamera. That this one here is basically like a two-door Panamera technology-wise, with 189 or six foot two. I still have enough headroom here left, and this also has a microfiber ceiling here, very beautiful. And they are doing like an extreme effort to make the convertible as silent as the coupe. So this is also a multi-layer soft top here. You have also multiple adjustments for the seat. For example, here when I press this one forward. Then here, the front area of the seat goes more forward. So that's of course a good thing then when you have especially long legs. I really like the microfiber steering wheel and also that we have here on the steering wheel still real buttons with nice clicking sounds. Also turn wheels and so on and you can change the views of the instruments. There's also a night vision view here available, but you can of course you know, put that away like this, or you can switch the whole view like that. So all digital, but uh, pretty responsive overall, I have to say. Right side heated steering wheel, and there's of course more to discover inside the cockpit. Well, and since we have the convertible, we can as well open the roof, then you can have a better look at the interior soon as well. There we go. That always looks like a hill, doesn't it? So if there's a car available as coupe and convertible, I think from the looks wise, the coupe is always more beautiful. So when I use this button right here and then control the rear window levers, then all of these windows here go down simultaneously. Also interesting that here we have the seat belt reacher. So here, open the door and uh, close it also with a soft close. There we go. And then I can also easier put on the seat belt. And here the cockpit perspective, very clean design indeed. Here more microfiber covering and I love these manual controls here of the vents and also just listen to them. When you put them in and lock clock, rarely do we see that nowadays in here the climate unit. Ah, beautiful with nice clicking sound, metal nerding around. That's what I love about this, for this vehicle here. This is here the start stop button by the way and um, when you control it like this, you can actually control the driving modes. You know, like here, the typical Bentley normal mode, comfort, um, custom, or for example, for the sport mode, that's how you can control it. And E-mode, that way you could also drive, you know, pure electric, depending you know, on how the battery status is. Also nice Alcantara, well, it's not from Alcantara, but the microfiber here around the middle console. Then we have here, oh, look at that, you know, how smooth it opens, it takes ages, but it looks cool definitely, and adaptive cup holders. And under the armrest, now there's for the first time an inductive charging pad and two USB-C chargers, kind of you know, small in here though. And even more spectacular with the screen, first of all, there is updated infotainment, as you can see right here. This also goes quicker, uh, but most of the time you will connect Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. But even more spectacular is here when you use the screen button, like this, you can either have these analog gauges right here, compass, um, you know, this time clock here, or press it one more time, goes back to that screen. So they can actually vary that. And when you shut down the vehicle, there we go, it goes back and you have this even surface like this that you do not see the screen at all, that it makes the appearance as it would be a vehicle, you know, from, uh, you know, like a 
classic age and so on and you don't have the visible infotainment system so yeah i think you can uh, choose that a very cool decision and yeah i really appreciate that you still have the classic user interface and everything is metal nerd you can feel you can touch everything so that is something that is missing in a lot of nowadays vehicles as well so if you ask for more versions so they will always have the same powertrain the v8 plug-in hybrid it just will be like we well, like when you have the s version it will be trimmed in a different way. In this one here, the speed version, then once again here to the most sporty styling. I would, yeah, I think I would go for that one. Blue combination here, it's also pretty lovely. As for the rear seats, hmm, yeah, that's a tricky thing. So, I mean, you have these cup holders here for the rear seats, if there's someone sitting there. You have Isofix, you can install child seats. This here, by the way, is also interesting. You can put this out. This will be not a transition to the trunk. That's not possible. And then you have this um, tool hidden here and yeah, no one really knows what it's for. Maybe you know, then tell me in the comments. Um, yeah, this piece here can be uh, put back in there like this. So then it's fixed again. And so you see that behind my driver's seat, no adult could possibly ever sit actually, but what could be possible? So here, but when Leah is then on the passenger seat, that way like the maximum with the legs. And then the question is, could she then fit behind that seat? You see here there's some legroom left then, so maybe behind the driver's seat. Let's see. Yeah, barely works, but yeah, but so I would say like three tall adults do fit, four definitely not, because here behind the driver's seat, that is kind of impossible. Yeah, but that way, how's the comfort here in the, in the rear? It's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's happy with that. Um, by the way, a standard wind deflector could be installed. You can see here there are these these small holes right there. Uh, there, yeah, there we go, there we go. <laughs> this is where the classic wind deflector could be installed, and I would, yeah, I would also recommend that. Oh, nice stitching here, by the way, in the in the head restraints. Also pretty cool, by the way, the door handle. From the back side, you can feel with the finger, there's a metal knurling on the back side of the door handle. That's beautiful. Oh, and look at these pedals here, by the way, here, the Bentley logo in the brake. That's nice, isn't it? Well, and the trunk, I don't know if I even need to measure that here today, because look at that, um, it's almost nothing, you know. Also because of the plug-in hybrid system, it's even smaller. The coupe will offer a little bit more, but even there you cannot like fold the seats or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, so you kind of have to live with that, um, maybe like a backpack or something, and that's it. The only beautiful thing is that it also has electric clothing, and here, you may have maybe seen it to open it, it's actually pretty cool that you can press that Bentley logo. For the convertible, especially, I think for luggage, for a longer trip, you will have to use the rear seats. So definitely one of the most exclusive convertibles and coupés out there. Do you like it? Tell me in the comments. What about the changes here? If it's, by the way, an extended facelift or an all-new generation, Bentley talks about all-new generation. Same did Porsche with the Panamera. It is like that the base chassis more or less remained the same and then there were extended cha extensive changes. So I think you can argue about this and that um, matter of definition for sure. And if you like, you can check out the Porsche Panamera or more Bentley content here on our channel.